The reason they're having some problems is DBMS Metadata is a special child. I regularly use DBMS Metadata to retrieve DDL. It's obviously the way we do it. But when I put this routine into a Peel SQL procedure so I can give the routine to developers, they get insufficient privileges errors no matter what privileges I give them. And let's explore that further because this is not particularly with DBMS metadata, but as DBA is one of the common things that I heartily recommend and endorse is if you have administrative facilities which you want to give to developers to let them be a bit more self-service, you might create routines under a power user and then grant that execute facility on those routines out to the development community. So you might let people, for example, kill their own session, but not kill other people's sessions. So you might put a little wrapper around older system kill session, put it in a PL SQL procedure, give it to developers so they can kill their own sessions if they get locks or hangs. Things like that, using PL SQL as an API to expose administrative things to developers, I think is an awesome facility. I hate that concept of developers having to come cap in hand to the DBA who's on some sort of power control trip going, no, you have to ask me for everything. Empower your developers, make them more productive. This person's tried to do that, but they're having some problems. The reason they're having some problems is DBMS metadata is a special child in the Peel SQL world. So I'll create a table called emp2. It's a copy of scott.emp. So we're gonna work with emp2 all the way through. We got scott.emp2, and then I've got another schema in the same database called asktom. It's my local copy of the asktom database. I'll put a copy of employee there called emp2 as well. So I've got scott.employee2 and asktom.employee2. Two schemas, each with a copy of this table called emp2 that I'm gonna go play around with in terms of getting its DDL. Now, if I connect to Scott, it can get its own objects with DDL very, very easily. I do select dbmethnetter.ddl. I'm getting the DDL for a table. The table's called emp2 and it's in my own schema. So Scott can get his own DDL, no problems there. If I try get the DDL for something in someone else's schema, I get table not found in schema ask Tom. And what it's actually saying is that we went and looked in the dictionary to see if Scott could see something called ask Tom.m2. It doesn't have any privileges on that table and therefore DBMS metadata says you can't get the DDL for it. So let's explore how we could give Scott sufficient privileges to actually do that. So I'll connect to sysdba, my DBA user. Let's give Scott the ability to select anything in the database, select any table. So if I reconnect now as Scott, you can see he can do select star from asktom.emp2. So he can see the asktom data, et cetera. He can see the columns, all that kind of stuff. But still, you cannot get the metadata or the DDL using DBMS metadata for something in someone else's schema, even though Scott can see the data in every other schema. That seems a bit strange. Let's take it next level. I'll go back into sysdba and I'll give select any dictionary to Scott now. So they can select any table outside the dictionary and they can also select any object inside the dictionary. So if I reconnect to Scott, this guy is like incredibly powerful now. He can select from DBA users, DBA tables, DBA tab columns. He can select from all the V dollar views. He can select anything in the sys schema. He's got all the rights, all the power. We connect now, so we're still connected to Scott. He can select the dictionary. He can select any table in the database. And he still can't get the DDL for this asktom.employee2 table. How do we solve this? Let's reconnect again as sysdba. I'll take away those powerful privileges because I don't want my Scott, you know, mucking around with my database. So no select any table, no select any dictionary. But what I will give them is select catalog role. Let's now connect to Scott. Now that I've given him select catalog role, he can't see the asktom.employee table. He's lost the ability to query that data, but he can get the DDL for it. And so that's probably the clue here that you need select catalog role in order to get the DDL to use you know, DBMS metadata for someone else's objects. So what special privileges tucked away inside select catalog role that is not covered by select any table and select any dictionary? Let's explore. Let's connect to sysdba. So what are the roles that sit underneath select catalog role? Only one, HS admin select role. So maybe the privileges are tucked away in there. So are there any granted roles under that one? So I'm just gonna, you know, we could have a recursive list of roles here that have all sorts of privileges. 
but there's none. So the only role that sits inside select catalog role is HS admin select role, and it's got no other roles underneath it. So the only system privileges we need to look at now are the ones in select catalog role and HS admin select role. And what privileges do those two roles have? They've got none. Very strange, isn't it? So what's going on? To see what's going on as it pertains to DBMS metadata, we need to go digging down in a whole stack of objects in the database that are prefixed with the term KU dollar, and they're all owned by sys. Now, if I run that, you can see there's a stack. Now, what they are is these are views defined in the database that DBMS metadata uses to get any particular object. So if I'm looking for a user definition, I'll DBMS metadata is going to use, for example, this view here. So let's look at the definition of those internal views. If I go look at this one, KU dollar proc view, for example, this is going to show me all the procedures in the database. It's a bit cryptic, but it doesn't actually show me a great deal here. It's actually coming from a thing called KU base proc view. So let's get the DDL for that and see what's in there. If I look at this, now we're getting deep you know, into the bowels of the Oracle database. It's KU dollar addition this, KU dollar addition that, et cetera, object type number, et cetera, all this kind of cryptic stuff. But here's the key thing. Notice it says anyone that's querying this has to have in their session roles select catalog role. It's literally hard coded into the views that DBMS metadata uses. The only way this thing passes muster is if you have select catalog role granted to you. It's literally hard coded in the definition for every single view that DBMS metadata uses. So it's not really a privileges thing. It's not whether you have select any table, select any dictionaries. It literally is that specifically named role has to be given to you as a session role. So let's go back into Scott Tiger now and explore that with regard to DBMS metadata. I'm now tackling our original question that came in. I'm going to put build a little utility called get the DDL. You pass in a username and I'll return a club, which is the DDL for the employee two table name owned by that user. So I could pass in myself, I could pass in other users and Scott's the person that's going to be able to run this. Don't forget they've got select catalog role so they can get DBMS metadata for any user. If I run it, I get the DDL for my own schema. I'm getting the, the scottm 2 table that runs fine. I can do select DBMS metadata.get DDL for ask Tom, as we saw, because I've got select catalog role, that works fine. But if I try run that exact same command inside this procedure, I get the same problem. I don't get access to it. Now, anyone that's used PL SQL in the database in the past will know the reason for this. And that's unrelated to DBMS metadata. And that is whenever you run a definers rights PL SQL program, all roles are turned off for the duration of that execution. That's a problem because as we just saw, the only way DBMS metadata lets you get access to its objects is if you have that role given to you in your current session. PL SQL is gonna turn that role off. How do we get roles activated in PL SQL? We do auth ID current user. We make them invokers rights. So now my redefining this routine as invokers rights routine, I can get my own DDL and I can get DDL for ask Tom as well. So that seems to have solved the problem. However, let's now explore this in terms of the kind of activity I mentioned before in terms of DBAs giving access to particular users a, a limited set of administrative privileges. I'm going to revoke select catalog, catalog role from Scott because Scott's just a typical user. I'm going to create a power user. This is the user I'm going to have that's going to have various routines that I'm going to give out to the development environment so people can take advantage of admin functions. So this person's got connect and they've got select catalog role. I'll create this user called power user get the DDL and they've got the same routine. You pass in the username and you get the employee to definition for that particular user. And because this is the thing I'm going to be exposed to the outside world, I'm giving access to it to Scott, I'm giving access to it to Ask Tom, two of my typical developers in my environment. I connect to Scott Tiger. He can't even get stuff in his own schema anymore because all the roles are disabled, even though this person has select catalog role because it's just a definer's rights procedure. No problems. We'll re reinvent that routine as we saw before with auth ID current user and then regrant it back to Scott and whatever. So now I can run it as Scott. He gets the DDL for Scott, no problems. 
I run it for Ask Tom and I still can't get it. This is the problem. You cannot have a separate user called Power User, even with AuthID Current User, and let them float around. It just doesn't work because the only person with Select Catalog role is the Power User, not Scott or Ask Tom. Before you think this is some bug that's here, this is actually literally straight out of the documentation. The DBMS metadata package is a privilege, considers a privileged user to be someone who's connected to SIS or has the select catalog role. And then it goes on to tell us in stored procedures, the select catalog role is disabled. Therefore, appeal SQL can only fetch metadata from objects in its own schema. Funny enough, it says, if you want to write a appeal SQL program that fetches for other schema, you have to make the program invoker's rights. That's true, but what it does not sort of allude to the fact is you can't have a dedicated power user, which is the only one with select catalog role, and then offer that out to everyone. The only way you can do it is to actually give your individual developers select catalog role. That's something you might not want to do because of security restrictions. It's, it's up for you. In a development environment, maybe. Uh, in testing environments and UAT, et cetera, maybe not. This is pretty much the only way you can do it. You need to create a little get my DDL routine in every developer's routine that they want to do it. So I'll connect to SysDBA, I'll create one in Scott, and I'll let Ask Tom run it. That'll let Tom get access to routine DDL in the Scott schema. And similarly, I'd create one in Ask Tom and grant that to Scott. And then, for example, here I can connect to Scott, I can get, get my own DDL, and I can get Ask Tom's DDL as well. That's pretty much the only way to do it. You have to actually create a routine in every single schema or create one in the sys schema and then offer that out to everyone.